Hi everybody, this is Lee, and I'm talking about health care and the state of Kentucky. Um, I've spoken about issues related to health care in general terms, uh, the Affordable Care Act, single payer, uh, Medicare for all, issues like that. And then I've also spoken about um, health care and Montana, and then health care and Utah. Um, and so now I'm looking at Kentucky. Uh, Kentucky is um, unique in that they, um, I wouldn't say enjoy, but they do have the highest rates of cancer in the nation. And so I'm talking about Kentucky and health care. Um, I'm looking at several angles to this issue, the fact that um, the uh, GOP Kentucky legislature uh, has moved fast to put forth some anti-choice bills, um, which includes the defunding of Planned Parenthood. In fact, um, the atmosphere has gotten to be to the point that the head of the Planned Parenthood for both Indiana and Kentucky has stepped down. And so this is what you see in terms of um, reproductive health, women's health care, um, and that will come up later in this video when I talk about cervical cancer and breast cancer rates in Kentucky. But um, for the first time, Kentucky has a Republican governor, Republican House, Republican, you know, state Senate, and so they've put forth a lot of anti-choice bills, even though the governor kind of said that they were focusing on the economy, not so much social issues, but as soon as they had the Republican majority, that was the first thing that they actually went for, was uh, reproductive health um, and family planning. So um, here we are. And this is what's happening at the state level. People have been talking about what's happening on the um, federal level. We've got Mike Pence, a very strong um, anti-abortion, um, anti-choice uh, stamp coming from the state of Indiana uh, into the federal office and overseeing uh, the Mexico City gag rule. And then we have, um, again, uh, Kentucky with a majority now in all levels of government um, also um, taking steps for anti-choice um, laws. And so this is Indiana and Kentucky, but I'm focusing on Kentucky and the fact that they are um, planning to uh, defund Planned Parenthood, which actually provides a lot of reproductive health services for women, uh, cancer screenings, um, disease screenings, infection screenings, pregnancy screenings, tests for fertility, um, everything that you can get screened or tested for um, in terms of specifically for women, it mostly happens at Planned Parenthood that they are the main provider of these services and that Medicaid is the main funder. And so this is what's happening um, at the state level with the um, rapid movement to defund um, certain health care uh, services and then also um, make things a lot harder on people who are of low income and cannot afford to pay out of pocket for private services or pay a high deductible or even a monthly premium for these services. And so this is what's happening um, on one level. Uh, and then we've got Rand Paul, who is one of the senators for the state of uh, Kentucky. He's working on the Obamacare Replacement Act. And I will say for Rand Paul that he was a voice of reason somewhat in the Senate saying that it's not a good idea to repeal one health care plan without actually having a plan in place. And so there was a plan put forward by Susan Collins um, that uh, somewhat modified the Obamacare and then Rand Paul has his own um, package that he put together. Um, it will remove parts of the Affordable Care Act, the mandate, and minimum standards for care. 
and then a two-week window for people with um, pre-existing uh, conditions to sign up for care. And then an expanded ability for insurance to uh, sell insurance companies to sell plans in multiple states. And so I'll leave a link in the description so people can follow through and see what Rand Paul, one of the senators from Kentucky, what he's put forth. And it's very important that he represents the state of our nation with the highest cancer rate. Um, and that includes breast cancer and cervical cancer, also prostate, colorectal um, cancers. Um, and then there's the rapid movement of the state legislature to uh, make it harder for women to get screenings for breast cancer and cervical cancer. So it's something kind of weird um, happening at the state level. Uh, but this is Rand Paul. Uh, Mitch McConnell is the other um, senator from Kentucky who also supports the repeal of Obamacare. But again, you know, what's the replacement going to be? That has to be decided and reconciled, these several bills that are being put forth. And um, I spoke about um, what happened in Montana with Max Baucus, who insisted that Libby Man Montana have access to Medicare for all, single payer health care, universal health care in Montana because of asbestos poisoning. Max Baucus took care of his people. Um, are Rand Paul and Mitch McConnell going to take steps to take care of their people in the state of Kansas, again, who have the highest rates of cancer in the nation? Um, I'm going to go through a few articles to um, see if I can hopefully explain or help explain what is causing um, the issues um, in Kentucky. Um, these are going to be a combination of several articles, but it, it's, it's seeming like cancer is um, an epidemic in uh, Kentucky. And there are several reasons why that is speculated by these articles. One, high rate of poverty, a uh, high rate of illiteracy, and then also a high rate of envi environmental contamination with um, carcinogens, and then a high rate of smoking, high rate of ob obesity. And so, uh, some of these are self-explanatory, but the carcinogens are likely coming from the coal mining industry. There are certain hard metals that are released into the air uh, when there is coal mining, um, and coal mining is very intense in Kentucky. Um, the strip mining, it's released into the air, it gets into the lungs, um, it gets into the soil, it gets into the water. But people breathe it in, and lung cancer is extremely hard to treat. Um, and then also medical illiteracy, where people just don't know to look for symptoms, or once the symptoms manifest, um, it's too far advanced to really treat. And then there's, um, you know, the poverty issue, where if they don't have insurance through their jobs, if they just don't, if they're on disability or there's no access to work. They may not have um, employment provided health insurance. So that means they may have to pay out of pocket or they have to try to keep up some kind of premium and hopefully they can afford the deductible and then get their screening or whatever they need. And so there's barriers um, to getting um, good health care and that's contributing to the high rate of cancer in um, Kentucky. Um, also, the before coal, uh, tobacco was also the industry of choice. And um, since tobacco was so much a part of the economy, there was very um, strong reluctance to actually criticize tobacco as a source for lung cancer or other kinds of cancers. Very discouraged. That was their cash crop. And so there was some uh, protectionism of the industry. The same way there is with coal. Um, people get real nervous and excited when they think that their jobs are going away. If their jobs are tobacco, or they used to be, and their jobs are now coal, they want to protect the industry, even at the risk of um, 
having public health issues, life-threatening, fatal, uh, lethal uh, health issues. And so that's Kentucky. Um, there was the Affordable Care Act um, that was afforded to the citizens of Kentucky. And then there were more screenings because um, the Affordable Care Act covered that, that people increased um, their use of screening measures, preventative measures. Um, and so now we're in a different place where that's being repealed. And um, what effect is that going to have on the cancer rate? Um, I said myself that um, since federal employees uh, specifically our Congress, specifically our senators, our Senate, such as Rand Paul and Mitch McConnell, they actually enjoy health care, a very thorough, very robust benefit package that the people of Kentucky actually pay for. Um, they are very well taken care of by the people of Kentucky. And the question is, are they going to return the favor? and take care of the people of Kentucky. They've already attacked the screenings available to women for cervical cancer, um, the breast cancer screenings, all of other sorts of reproductive health um, screenings that are specific to women. They attacked that when they defended Planned Parenthood. So between this and then the Affordable Care Act, the repeal, and a replacement that may cover some things and then may not, may keep people 26 of years of age covered on their parents, may not, we're not sure what the final result is going to be, what kind of package that they're going to put together. Um, but, you know, rather than protect the Affordable Care Act, I mean, the best option likely is to have single-payer health insurance. Single-payer uh, health insurance, the Medicare for all, that our Senate enjoys, that Mitch McConnell and Rand Paul both have Medicare for all. They are universally taken care of with their insurance. All of our Senate is. All of our Congress is. And that's why you see <laughs> Republican Party members who fought uh, to get into office, they're taken care of. They have health care. Now that they're the big government, they have health care. What about the people? And this is a question where there's just this uh, reluctance to provide the same um, health care options that they enjoy in Washington to people in their home states. Now, Max Baucus of Montana said, no, you are going to take care of the, my people in Montana. Um, they had home nurses. They had nutritional supplements. They had doctor care, um, no deductibles, no premiums, um, no, no, none of that. They just had health care under Max Bacchus. And so we don't know what the result of that's going to be either uh, with the repeal of uh, Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act. But we've seen um, single-payer health care, uh, universal health care in um, as a as a healthcare option, we've seen it in action in states in Europe, in countries in Europe. We've seen it in Canada. We've seen it in Congress. Um, it definitely works at the federal level for our Senate and our Congress who have universal health care. We've seen it in, for Medicare for people 65 years and older. What single payer health care looks like in action. Um, they're taken care of. Um, hopefully, there's going to be a negotiation for uh, lower cost on drugs for Medicare. Maybe Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump are going to work together on that, I hope. Uh, and we've also seen single-payer health care, universal health care, Medicare for all without any um, age restriction in Libya, Montana. It actually took asbestos poisoning for that to happen. But that's not the only place in the United States where there's environmental con contamination. Clearly, there's environmental uh, contamination in Kentucky um, historically from the industries that have operated there. 
and then from uh, personal health habits. And so um, we've seen what single payer health care looks like, um, Medicare for all without the age mandate, where everyone is covered, um, everyone is provided health care uh, without regard for um, anything that might, you know, make someone hesitate to provide care. There's no insurance company eating up um, the, um, you know, the the uh, economic uh, payout. There's no middleman that has to be paid. It's just, you know, this person is sick in need of care. They get the care. There's no middleman hustling around trying to drive up the premiums or the deductibles or anything like that. So, I mean, we've seen it in action. We know what it looks like. Uh, what's really preventing it from happening? Uh, maybe some propaganda. Um, maybe a lot of um, mm, uh, propaganda. I think that's what it is. Um, I'm looking at um, Open Secrets because I decided to see, since Mitch McConnell and Rand Paul both represent Kentucky, I just wanted to see what was preventing them from providing their state of Kentucky with the highest rate of cancer in the nation. What prevented them from providing the people of Kentucky with Medicare for all? regardless of age, regardless of pre-existing condition, economic, you know, property holdings, you know, bank accounts, everyone gets covered. What is preventing them from doing that? I'm the same way that Max Bacchus of um, uh, Montana did for his people. So I went to Open Secrets to see if I could learn something there. And it turns out that uh, Mitch McConnell has um, some interesting contr contributors um, in his, you know, for his campaigns for Senate. Um, in the top five of his top five contributors uh, from 2011 to 2016, three of them are health companies: Kindred Healthcare, Humana. Incorporated, Blue Cross, and Blue Shield. And so um, combined with all the super PACs and individual um, campaign committee contributions, um, the super PACs, things like that, um, he also in his top five are the insurance companies and health professionals. From the insurance companies, he received over a million dollars. 1,200,000, I mean, 1,200,000 from the insurance companies. And then from health professionals, he earned 1,000, I mean, 1,100,000 and some change from the insurance companies and health professionals, specifically Kindred Healthcare, Humana, Blue Cross, and Blue Shield. And so maybe that's blinding uh, Mitch McConnell to the needs of his own uh, community, um, the needs of Kentuckians who are suffering um, from ill health and um, have had the Affordable Care Act repealed with maybe something not as thorough in place, um, basically setting people on their own with health savings accounts and tax credits. Um, that may cover um, cervical screenings, breast cancer, cancer screenings, and may not, may cover 26-year-old children, and may not. Um, so um, that's the hold up maybe with um, single-payer health care from Mitch McConnell. I looked at Rand Paul, and it's not um, the same. Um, it looks like he's receiving more from the, um, well, he actually, um, health professionals is in his top five. Um, he received far less, uh, 5,000, $500,000, um, dollars from the health professionals. So, um, basically Mitch McConnell received about two to three million from the health, um, ins insurance industry. And then Rand Paul received about 
five hundred thousand. Um, but you know, there's reasons for everything, and uh, maybe this has something to do with why they're making the decisions that they're making on healthcare. But definitely the attacks on Planned Parenthood, which also includes um, the attacks on breast cancer screening, cervical cancer screening, other kinds of uh, reproductive health services, is significant when Kentucky does have a high rate of cervical cancer. Um, what's the end game here? And then you get to um, the repeal of the Affordable Care Act, um, the refusal to provide health care to everyone, um, even the same way that Max Baucus did insisting on his state or his uh, that city and the state have universal health care. And you question what's stopping Mitch McConnell and Rand Paul from doing the same. And you see that the health care industry have said that they should do otherwise, um, that there needs you know, according to the healthcare industry, that um, there needs to be a middleman, um, them specifically, to collect on these transactions, um, to eat up a lot of that tax credit set aside, to eat up um, that health savings account on um, paying off the middleman. Uh, whereas with, you know, the public option, even with the Obamacare or even better, Medicare for all, uh, where everyone is covered regardless of age, the same way everyone is covered regardless of age in the Senate and in the Congress, um, is likely the best option. We can spread out the cost amongst a large swath of people. Um, there's no premium, there's no deductible, and so, of course, whether, whatever tax is paid, it evens out um, in the end. And even if someone doesn't use it, at least it's there if they need it. Um, everyone is covered. So anyway, these are um, things that might um, inform people of why decisions are being made and the way they're being made. I'm going to leave these links in the description and people can follow up and read for themselves of you know, what they feel the connections are um, in terms of receiving or not receiving health care and then the resulting um, high cancer rates and the depth, and what that all has to do with it. Good luck.